Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahole with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master fitter at Second Swing. We're outside today. We are filming for the first time in a long time uh, due to COVID-19 restrictions, haven't been able to film videos. We're back today practicing our social distancing. Uh, Thomas is gonna hit some golf shots for us today. We've got kind of a test of some irons, some hybrids, and some utility irons to see, you know, which is the right fit for your bag, which is the right fit for Thomas's bag. So we've got five clubs today. Mizuno MP32 3 iron, a 716 Titleist AP2 3 iron, We've got an Epic Forged 4 iron, we've got a TaylorMade P790 3 iron, and then a G410 3 hybrid. So, kind of a mix of brands and models and lofts as well. We'll get to that a little bit. But, Thomas, this is always the biggest or one of the biggest decisions that golfers face in their bags what club to put in this gap. Uh, what do you think we'll see today? Yeah, so this is a very important transition point in a player's bag. Um, a lot of times I see players come in for fittings that are playing older irons that have more of a traditional blade looking to them with the three iron. Had that discussion with them about possibly a hybrid, possibly a utility iron. Um, biggest thing I'm going to notice is probably launch and spin and forgiveness essentially. I would say that with the blade, uh, you're, you're essentially with the MP32, maybe the AP2 a little bit, maybe not going to be quite as forgiving on the missets. And then you'll see maybe a little trend as we go up and maybe forgiveness that the ball may go a little further, may spin a little bit less, um, may launch a little bit lower, um, just kind of be a little more forgiving and may fly a little bit straighter. Yeah, well, as you said, all these clubs are going to perform differently, different characteristics for each one. So let's get into the numbers here. We have Trackman outside with us today, so we're going to get into some numbers, break it down, and see what you guys can get out of these clubs. I'm excited. All right, Thomas, what are we starting with today? Start, first starting with the Mizuno MP32. Classic blade, three iron, going to yep. be tough to hit probably, at least for someone like me, but not for you probably, right? Uh, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> I haven't hit a three iron blade in my iron set for a long time. Uh, so this is kind of back in that classic loft, 21 yeah. degrees for a three iron. 21, okay. Yep. All right, let's see what you got. Sounds good. with the MP32 3 iron. Yep. What did you think about hitting that? And I know, you know, this is kind of a comparison between different sticks really you can put at the kind of end of your iron set at the top there. So how would you feel about that one? So biggest takeaway for me is the great shots were really good. Yep. The great straight shots were really good. The last couple of swings, left one out to the right, pull one a little low on, a little low on the face as well. Notice that carry number dropped pretty dramatically. Mm -hmm. I had a couple there carrying 211 right off the bat and that last one carried 196. So that's my concern is a little bit of that dispersion kind of getting a little bit wider essentially. Right. So, kind yeah. of the miss hits are yep. or penalized a little bit more. Correct. Right. Yep. Exactly. Well, let's get to club number two here. Okay. What and do you got for me next? Well, let's see what we got here. Let's how about let's try the uh, AP2. Okay. Perfect. 716 AP2 3 iron. Yep. So this has the exact same loft, 21 degrees. Um, probably in a slightly more forgiving um, profile. Should be, right? Yeah. That kind still of, kind a little of, bit of a cavity in the back. Yeah, it's still, you know, a player's iron. I mean, like Jordan Spieth was playing the AP2 there for, for a while. I mean, better players, you know, mm -hmm. they still can they still play something that's got a little more forgiveness to them as well. So, definitely a little larger profile to look down at. Definitely feels a little bit more consistent than yeah. hitting that, that blade for sure. Yeah, and yeah. it seems like, I mean, I don't know how much you're hitting the center, how it feels to you on each shot, but yep. it doesn't seem like you're uh, missing to the left or to the right as much Correct. with this one as the MP32 blade, which yep. is also an older model, we should keep in mind too. It is. Uh, yep. So maybe the, a blade plus the older model and technology might be not as forgiving, we'll say, as something that's a little bit more modern, also has that cavity back design. Yeah, we're essentially just kind of testing the differences between mm -hmm. a blade versus more cavity, and then yeah. we'll expand to a hybrid and more utility iron. Yeah, so. for sure. Well, yeah. that's shot number five. Definitely a straighter bull flight from kind of what I noticed, and then yeah. consistently was carrying you know, over 210, 215, mm -hmm. what I kind of noticed there as well. Yeah, I mean, so 
looking at the two, kind of comparing the, the two clubs here, you got about nine extra yards of carry um, with the AP2 and about nine extra yards of total distance as well. Okay. Averaging 238 with the AP2. Yep. And uh, you're launching that one just a little bit lower, actually, as well. So interesting. Uh, was yep. that well in minimal difference? Yeah. Ten point one to ten point three. Okay. The difference in the launch angle. So uh, the launch was very similar. Smash factor just slightly more efficient um, with the the AP two there. Yep. So, I mean, what would you say? Like, if you're fitting yourself, needed to put one of these two clubs in your bag, which one would you pick? Uh, all day, this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This game's hard enough as it is. <laughs> right. It's great to look down at a blade, but three iron blade. I think times of, you know, they're, they're, they're been and gone. <laughs> right. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Well, let's get to the next one here, huh? Okay. Next. We'll go with your uh, the P790. Okay. So I've played around with this for a couple of years as my kind of utility slash driving iron. I played essentially four iron through, and I would kind of add this one in as my kind of utility club. Loft on this guy is 19 degrees. So okay. It's slightly so, stronger, even though it is a three utility. Yeah. I didn't go with the two P790, the UDI, just because I didn't, this was hitting this thing well enough as it was. Yeah. I was concerned with the two maybe not hitting it high enough. So, okay. Yep. So. Another one, a little low on the face. We'll see if I get away with that one. I think you have. Yeah. You did. Well, you got a carry of over 220 there, so. That one was I, low on the face, I said right away, and that spin rate kind of jumped up a yeah. little bit. But. And actually, we should probably, as the wind sort of picks up a little bit here, we should mention that too. It's kind of coming in and a little bit from the right here, so. You know, your draw is maybe a little bit exaggerated. It is maybe a little exaggerated, well. what we're seeing uh, here. But that, that was the first shot number five okay. with the P790. So again, that map is kind of going farther and farther up the fairway as, uh, as you add more forgiveness to the club here. So yep. um, looking at the, comparing all three now, bring up the table here. Uh, you added another five yards of carry, the P790, and then added another eight yards of total distance. So. And of course, your spin is continuing to drop as well, uh, down to 3,400 on average with that one. So, yep. what do you think of that so far? And that's—I know you've been playing this before, as your gamer in that sort of three iron spot in your bag. Uh, and it comes down to the forgiveness. That, that th third shot I hit, <laughs> it, that was a pretty bad swing, yeah. and I was—I was shocked to see that thing still carried over 220, and you know, mm -hmm. still kind of got out there. Um, and then one, one of the other shots, I think the last shot I hit, spun 4,200 RPMs. That one essentially. It was a miss hit low on the face, but it still carried over 220 again. So, forgiveness is definitely key. I noticed you mentioned the spin rate yeah. kind of gradually going, going down. I would expect that out of a club that's got less loft on Right. Yeah. You also got less loft, plus you got more rollout too yep. um, on your shots. So, like, you know, 223 carry, 246 total. You're getting more rollout versus the other ones. But now let's get into some maybe more fun ones, more forgiving clubs. We okay. got a, an epic forged four iron here. This is going to be interesting. Yep. It's going to be going to give us some kind of interesting results. Um, so this is my new toy I've kind of played around with. I only just got it last week, so I'm still kind of working on to see if I like it or not. Um, essentially, it's the Epic Forge. It is a four iron. So okay. four iron, you'd expect maybe we'll go a little less now. We'll talk about that kind of that loft discussion. With the Epic Forge four iron, 18 degrees loft on it. So it has less loft so has, than any of the clubs so far, correct. which have all been three irons. Yes, exactly. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to have that kind of discussion here a little yeah. bit later with regards to kind of loft and, and everything like oh, that yeah. as well. That's um, an important note because a lot of golfers say, well, I hit my seven iron less than my buddies, for example, um, and they wonder why that is. But it, a lot of it could just be the loft. You know, like, you know, standard lofts can range six, potentially six degrees of difference between something yeah. that's more of a player's iron and a game improvement iron. This kind of falls more into that game improvement category, so the lofts are going to be stronger. Yeah, definitely in that game improve, improvement category. Um, there's been kind of trends. A couple of tour players this year have kind of played a little more game improvement four iron as, a, yep. as their driving iron. I wanted to kind of play around with this as, as an idea. Uh, got a steel fiber golf shaft in there, so it's you know, a little bit more forgiving for as, as well too. 
Um, I had to play around with the swing weight a little bit, so I had to add some lead tape. Okay. Because it came in with the steel fiber shaft at about C9. It's a bit a little light for mm -hmm. me. So I added, added a whole bunch of lead tape here to try and get that swing weight at 74 yeah. now. Okay. So back, kind of back in kind of that, that normal weight category. So I was yeah. like, I'm interested to see the numbers because I haven't seen the numbers with it yet. So well, here we I'm go. curious to find out. Now's the perfect time to do that. That was crisp. Yep. Definitely you can tell as it's flying, there's not much spin on this golf club. No, you're right about that. Yep. All right, so that was shot number five with the Epic Forged. Just a quick look at the data here. Your spin dropped pretty significantly. Uh, you had it at about 2500. I'm sure that, that one miss hit maybe kind of dropped it a little bit. Yeah, it was about 1800 that, that uh, one yeah, hit, yeah, because of the, maybe hitting it a little bit fat there. But yep. distance wise, gained another nine yards. Uh, carry distance has actually dropped a yard from the previous club. So this is yep. one of those, like, if you're really trying to chase one up there, hit, keep it sort yep. of low. You know, you got 18 degrees of loft here. This is actually, again, stronger loft than any of the clubs so far. Seems like this is the kind of club to, to use off the tee in those situations, in the wind, that type of thing. Yep. Keep in mind there's that one outlier in there that only carried like 200 yards yeah, on what it was. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's carrying a little shorter. Yeah. Still is going to carry a little further mm -hmm. in general, but keeping every single shot in there, keep it as biased as we can, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, you know, pretty pretty similar regards to carry, but it's gonna chase out because it's gonna spin on it. So. For sure. All right, last club. Okay. We got a G410 hybrid for you. And I have not hit a hybrid in a long time. I play a driving iron. I don't really hit a, hit a hybrid off the sure. tree very often. Um, the courses I play on, I don't really need a, a hybrid so mm -hmm. much to really hit into par fives until I'm usually, hit, usually hitting an, an iron instead. For you, the decision is not about necessarily the look, or how do you feel about the look of a hybrid? Because that's clearly different than the kind of, it's sort of the outlier in terms of appearance than the three you've hit so far. Yeah, I have a little bit of a hard time kind of with the, the left bowl a little bit with, with a hybrid. Okay. And that's a general trend with club players that has essentially have like a faster club speed. Yeah. Um, I, what I did with this one, I did put it in the flat, complete flat setting to help with that little bit of right to left shot. Now, okay. because I haven't hit this in a year, so yeah. it would be interesting to see how, right. how it works. But in general, I just have a hard time with the right to left shot. It's forgiving, don't get me wrong. For me, with a higher swing speed, I just like playing drive yeah. instead. Okay. So. There we go. That was hit real good too. That might have actually surpassed the first one that you hit over there. Such a crazy different look and flight compared to the last club. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There Another one over 270 yards. Yeah. Wow. Well, so this is going to be interesting with the, the data here because you had a couple that you didn't like from the hybrid there. Yeah. Just keep in mind that also too, this is a three hybrid, 19 degrees of loft on it as well. So it's same kind of loft as okay. the last couple of clubs. I mean, technically the Epic Forged has got 18, but the okay. 790 also has 19 degrees left on it as well. Okay, yep. got it. So that was overall average distance, your longest club, 256 of average. Now you had two of them that were over 270. Yep. Um, your spin rate was kind of in the middle in terms of the rest of the clubs, and I think that's largely because of a couple of those misses. You had 3,600 was the average, but yep. those last couple were smoked. Um, Carry-wise, that's your highest carry distance so far. But again, with the Epic Forge, you had a couple that smoked out there, and then you had the one miss hit. So I'm sure those clubs are pretty comparable. Uh, you just had, obviously, the highest ball flight was your Payne G410, which yeah. is kind of what you'd expect because the hybrid is probably something that, uh, based on the way you play, you kind of think that that's too spinny, too high launching for what you need in your bag, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, it's kind of very similar to kind of why I hit my fairy wood. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't see a need. It's, it's a great option for forgiveness, but for, for me, I have a hard time controlling the ball flight a little with it. Yeah. Um, so that's why I don't play it. But for players that need a little forgiveness, I'd absolutely say play a hybrid over a utility or even like a, a traditional three iron for yeah. sure. 
Um, it's going to get the ball up in the air easier, it's going to fly higher, it's going to have steeper landing angles, it's going to stop on the green a little faster. Absolutely. So, yep. All right, Thomas, you're breaking down the numbers here. Anything interesting that you're finding out? I think the biggest thing was, for me, difference between, for example, a utility iron and a hybrid. I mean, very, very similar distances. They just got there a different way. Um, what I'm kind of looking at here, for example, the Ping 3 hybrid, 19 degrees, and the uh, Epic Forged 4 iron, they were both going about 260 yards. The 4, four iron was carrying 227, the, four, the 3 hybrid was carrying 240. So I was getting there a different way. I like, said I like to play this off the tee a lot, so yeah. it's going to kind of chase out there a little bit for me as well. So that's probably the biggest takeaway. Um, the launch angle was lower with this, higher with the hybrid. Big difference also was kind of landing angle and height. When I was hitting the 4 iron with 18 degrees of loft on it, my height was only 60 feet in the air and my landing angle was like 29. Yeah. So if I was hitting this into a green, it's going to be hard, have a hard, hard time kind of stopping that up for sure. Yeah. Um, with the hybrid, it was you know almost 90 feet in the air uh, on average, and it had a much steeper landing mm -hmm. angle. So with the hybrid, you have a chance to stop the ball a little bit quicker, which is why those players with a little slower swing speeds have really benefit from playing a hybrid. Right. Yeah. So I mean, there's clear benefits, advantages, disadvantages that people are going to get from each type of club. You know, if you get the blade, uh, we saw some in your shots that you know if you were missing left, missing right, it was kind of exaggerated. Yep. Right. And it was low at lower flight, and then your misses were kind of really punished I guess a little bit more uh, and then we went to you know like for example the epic fours you had kind of that one where you really miss hit it and it still went 240 yards yeah so there's clear advantages and disadvantages it does depend on the player I'm assuming that okay here's what's gonna fit best for what you want to do from 200 yards 250 yards whatever the case is that that type of club would fit into your bag that whatever distance that is these clubs are all different and they're going to present uh, different advantages and disadvantages for you. Yeah, exactly. Um, I kind of switched this to the, my dispersion pattern a little bit. We're looking on the screen here and I can see, you can see general trend with the hybrid carry distance was significantly further up the screen. You can yeah. kind of see that. Um, but you'll notice the dispersion. I had a hard time controlling that a little bit for, yeah. for me because I had a hard time. If I was looking at this screen here, I love that green circle. Now this is carry distance, so it's, they're all kind of carrying a little kind of in closer on average. So I love the fact that it was consistent every time. And that was that epic forge. Yeah. And I reduced it to four or five because there was a couple of miss it per club that I took out. Um, we also noticed with the traditional three iron, shorter distance, more loft on it, a little less forgiving. It's yeah. actually just going to go a little bit shorter is what I, what, what I would kind of expect there. So that was, I thought that was kind of interesting as well. I mean, smash factor with the hybrid 1.52, <laughs> kind of interesting. Now with yeah. the driver, you know, 1.5 is kind of the legal limit because yeah. they re reduce the amount, that, the speed that ball can come off that club face. There's no li limit on a hybrid, so that's why I was able to get a little over okay. 1.5 there with that one. I mean, all very, very good, but that was kind of interesting. And then, interesting the fact, for example, this a four iron getting 1.5 right. smash factor is <laughs> right. kind of interesting there as well. Well, and one thing I think to note too that's important is iron lofts are very different. You know, I think I mentioned this earlier. I want to reiterate it that. Iron loft, especially the, the stock lofts, can be very different. This is a four iron, mm -hmm. and it's 18 degrees. Now, we played, or you hit, you know, a couple three irons over 21. That's a pretty big deal, right? Three degrees of loft can be anywhere from like eight to 10 yards um, on the course. So if you're worried about maybe you get a new set of irons or you want more distance on your irons, it doesn't have to be a brand new model. It doesn't have to be something drastic. It could just be the lofts are different and you want to tweak those. Yep. That could change and be exactly what you're looking for. So that's one thing to keep in mind that people think all oh, seven irons the same loft all the way across the board. It's really not. They're all very different. You'll have manufacturers that have an eight iron and a six iron that could be the same based on the model. So uh, that's just one thing to keep in mind. We saw it here today with an 18 degree four iron, which is very different from a three iron at 21 degrees. Yeah, and that's the other thing too. As you mentioned, 26 degrees to about 34, 35 degrees is the range approximately for a seven iron. Yeah. But then you got to talk about the other two ends of the spectrum with gapping as well. Some iron sets, like this this iron set here, I believe the pitching wedge is about 39 or 40 degrees of loft on yeah. it. So Which I that's never like an eight that. iron, right? Yeah. That's about an eight iron in another bag. Yeah, so then that's why it's important then to talk, work with your fitter on, on gapping. You know, these clubs have been positioned, so yes, they're stronger lofted, to get the ball to spin a little bit less, but they also have had the center of gravity changed around, so you still get the ball up in the air. Yep. So you're not really reducing, you're obviously picking up a little bit of distance that way as well. But then you've got to talk about gapping with your fitter, how many wedges you need in your bag. If you have a pitching wedge that's got 40 yep. degrees and you want like a, a 60 degree, for example, in there, 
you got to somehow find a way right. to. <laughs> there's 20 degrees right there. You got to kind of fill gap right. with it as well. So that's going to be the little challenging part. So with gapping, you know, we tested five of these clubs, right? You're not going to have more than one of these in your bag. So it's basically here are the five sort of different options that players are going to have. They could have a straight up hybrid, and then we have kind of four different irons, uh, shaping, uh, construction, lofts even that you could choose from. But basically, you need to have find the one that's going to bridge the gap loft-wise, distance-wise, from your longest iron to a fairy wood, right? Yeah, yeah, and then workability too, a more blade-type golf club is going to be a little bit easier to work. Now, working a three iron, I don't know who really wants to kind of work a three iron, I just want to hit straight. So, <laughs> for me, I would play a little more forgiving club in, in my hand as my utility or my, or my hybrid. Um, mm -hmm. This is going to fly a little straighter on those miss hits, essentially. Yeah. Um, and then forgiveness. I mean, if I chunk a traditional three iron, it's not going to work out too well. Right. All we know is when I chunk this guy, it still chased out 240. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that's one thing to kind of keep in mind there too. So right. I'm, not, I'm not saying absolutely you need to play a game improvement driving iron or anything like that. I'm just saying test your options essentially. Yeah. Try and figure, work with a fitter what you're trying to get out of your game. Um, for me, I just want to hit this thing straight and far. So that's why I want to play a utility driving iron that right. I know is going to chase out there. Exactly. Well, golfers know where to go if they want to find out this information, right? Second Swing Golf. Uh, Fitting is available now uh, at any of our stores and also our online team is available to chat on the phone or do a video chat with you as well to get you dialed in. So Thomas, thanks for hitting a bunch of shots for us, breaking down the data.